Number one gives us two figures. So figure one I've highlighted in blue, and then we have figure two. And we want to find any of the transformations that would take figure one to figure two. So this first one says that we're just going to translate it by directed line segment AD, meaning that A is going to pull all the way to D. And we'll see that it does land exactly on figure two. So that one's good. B says to just rotate 180 degrees around point E. So point E would be our fixed point. These two shapes aren't touching. So a ro just rotating this shape around E isn't going to make them um, coincide with each other. So that is not true. Translate by directed line segment AE. So we're going to take A to E first and then reflect across line AC. So remember that's this line. And so if we reflect across here, that's going to end up looking something like this, which is not going to get us on to figure two. So this one is not true. D says translate by segment um, CE. So we'll take C to E. And then it says rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise around point E. So point E is going to stay fixed. So that's good. That's fixed. And then we're just going to rotate this 90 degrees um, counterclockwise around E. So that's going to get um, this point A to land on D, but it's not going to help us get this point um, B over to F. So that one is not going to work out. E says rotate 180 degrees around point C. So we're first going to take this shape and we're just going to rotate it. So give me a second to rotate this 180 degrees. And then we wanted it around C. So C is going to stay the fixed point. Okay, so it's going to be here. And it wants us to translate by directed line segment CE. So remember C stayed the same. So now we're taking C over to E, and then we're going to reflect across FE. So then this last final point will land on D, and that is going to be good. Then F says reflect across segment AB. So we're going to take and we're going to do a reflection across AB. Maybe it'll be easier for me to just draw this one. Um, than trying to reflect. So let's get this drawn. All right, so if we reflect over AB, then this is going to look like this. So here's our new triangle after the reflection. Then it wants us to rotate clockwise by angle BFE. So we're going to rotate this um, on this angle, which means we're going to rotate B down the 90 degrees. Okay, so F was going to stay in the same place. And then we're just going to rotate it down following that angle. So it's going to be like this. And then it says reflect over segment FE, which then will land that final point onto D. So that one is going to be good as well. Number two, draw an image of ACTS after a clockwise rotation around point P using angle CTS. So we're going to take and we're going to leave this point T in the, in the same spot. And then we're going to rotate this angle. So we're going to rotate this angle here. And so now when I rotate it, it doesn't just leave T in the right spot, but I'm going to keep putting T back in place. Um, but you'll just rotate. And if you have like tracing paper, you can just stick your pencil there so that it stays in place. Um, but that would be the rotation um, around T. And then it asks us to translate by segment CT. So now we're going to move it and just move it this far. Okay, so this, the length of this segment. So let me figure out how long that segment is. And we're just going to take and move this, this segment length away. 
So then there is your new um, image. And you could use, like I said, tracing paper to help you um, rotate and then move it the, this length of CT, but just remember that it should have moved a length of CT. Then it says describe another sequence of transformations that would result in the um, same image. So we could have actually translated it. This. Um, translate ACTS by directed segment CT first. Then rotate, so then we would have just moved it over, so C would be on top of T, or C prime would be on top of T. Then rotate um, around point T by angle CTS. So we could have just kind of done that one backwards, then it would have ended up um, with the same. That's just one example. There's multiple other ways you could describe um, that transformation that would result in the same image. Number three, draw the image of triangle ABC after this sequence of rigid transformation. So first thing we're going to do is reflect it over AB. So remember, everything will flip to the other side as if you folded the paper, folded the paper on AB. Okay, so here's where the new point C is. Then it wants us to translate this along vector U. So we want to move this whole thing, the length of vector U, away. And there would be our resulting image and we could label it um just remember this was a prime this was c prime and that is b prime number four describe a transformation that takes point a to point b so there's different ones you could say i'm going to say a reflection over the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. So if I kind of drew this out here, so if we had point A and we had point B, if we connected these with a segment and then found the perpendicular bisector of it, then we could um, reflect over the perpendicular bisector and that would move A on to B no matter where the points were. Number five, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Describe a sequence of rigid motions that takes A to A prime, B to B prime, and C to C prime. Um, so I like to start with a translation when the figures aren't touching each other. So I'm going to translate um, triangle ABC by directed segment. And I just like to do alphabetical. So I'm going to put point A with A prime. So translate triangle ABC by directed segment AA prime is going to be my first move. And this will um, get the triangles to have one matching segment or one matching point so far. So now A is on A prime. Um, then I'm going to, um, then I like to rotate. So then I'm going to rotate triangle ABC um, around point A prime until C coincides with C prime, meaning that we're just going to rotate it until C lands on C prime. We know the two triangles are congruent, so we know that this segment is exactly the same length as this one. So we know that when we do this, C will land exactly on C prime. And then finally here, we need to um, reflect so that we can get B on B prime. So then we will reflect um, triangle ABC over line segment A prime C prime. And then that will land B on top of B prime and we've gotten all of the vertices matching. A quadrilateral has rotational symmetry that can take all of its vertices to any of the other vertices. So what does this mean? Um, so select all conclusions. So if all the vertices can rotate on top of all the other ones, we know that all of the angles need to be the same size and all of the sides so that this could rotate on top of itself. Um, and so all the same side lengths, all the same angle measures. 
And then it says all rotations take one half of the quadrilateral to the other half. This isn't going to be true because a quadrilateral is going to rotate every 90 degrees. So it's not just going to take one half to the next because it's going to be almost like a quarter rotation each time. Number seven, a quadrilateral has a line of symmetry. Okay, so just one line of symmetry. Select all the conclusions that have to be true then about this. So if there's one line of symmetry only, all of the sides and all of the angles can't be equal. Otherwise, there would be more lines of symmetry. Um, two sides of the quadrilateral have the same length. Well, if we're reflecting it, at, if we're reflecting it once, then that would mean at least two sides have to be congruent because one side would have to reflect onto the other. And same with the angles. At least one set of angles would have to reflect. So we at least have two angles that are equal. So we can't have no sides or no angles, otherwise we wouldn't have any reflection symmetry. Number eight, which segment is the image of FG when we rotate it 90 degrees around point P? So I've highlighted segment FG and point P and we're gonna rotate clockwise. So let's just look at this. Remember you can do a 90, if you can't see it straight away, you can connect the figure to the center and draw in that 90 degree rotation. So remember we're going 90 degrees clockwise. So here would be a 90 degrees clockwise angle. So G is going to um, rotate onto A and F then would rotate onto B. So AB is going to be our image. Number nine, which statement is true about a translation? So a translation does not rotate a line. A translation does take a line parallel to the line or itself. Okay, so it takes a line to a parallel line or itself. So this is what a translation, if I took this line. So if I translate it, so let me duplicate it. So if I translate it, if I translate it kind of off of it, those lines are parallel no matter where this is. Or if I translate it kind of on the same slope, then it just goes to the exact same line. So B is true. A translation takes a line to a perpendicular line. That would be false. A translation dilates a line. That is false. 